I'm talking today to Doug Osborne. Doug is a UK clinical hypnotherapist. Hi, Doug, how are you? I'm very well. Hi, nice to meet you, Jane. Nice to meet you too, Doug. Doug, today we're talking about hypnotherapy and dealing with addictions. So let's start off with what is an addiction? Um, an addiction, uh, simply put, it's something that somebody uses to regulate themselves or make themselves feel better um, when a certain, a certain circumstances, and that might be right now, or that may be something that happened a long time ago, uh, become overbearing. Um, and they'll then use a substance. It could be anything. It can be anything from, um, from drugs, sex, shopping, people, um, a whole variety of smoking is a, a classic addiction, um, to help them manage difficult emotional states. What addictions can you treat with hypnotherapy? Um, it, it, so the, what I would say about to that is, is that it's about degrees, really. So um, I've treated uh, substance addictions, cocaine, quite often, um, sex addiction, uh, treated um, food, a variety of food addictions. What I would say is with uh, clinical hypnosis, it's very good for kind of low to moderate treatment of addiction. But somebody who's got a very severe addiction would need to, to, to seek um, uh, probably a clinic um, and, and, and a much more um, uh, structured sort of therapeutic approach. If you were dealing with somebody with an addiction, what would happen in the initial consultation? I think it's one of the most important things with addiction is to be very clear about what's happened in the past. Um, you can, can look at addictions as something that's kind of almost like a surface symptom, but almost, almost always with an addiction, it will have been formed out of a need um, to control a mood or uh, a particular situation that the patient felt was out of control in some way. Um, and that, that strategy for them would have worked. So what we often do in the first session, it's very much about um, building trust, um, me really understanding deeply kind of where they've come from. And often there might be a particular thing that's happened in their past or it may be go right back to their childhood. Um, where that's allowed the addiction to develop. Um, and quite often it'll be, it may, may even been uh, something that they sort of came across because it existed in their family, that so somebody in their family used to do that sort of thing, or they may be in a particular circle of friends that where it's acceptable to do that sort of thing. How do you help with the, with the addictions? Do you put suggestions in the person's mind when they're under hypnosis? What is the, what actually happens in the sessions? So what you would typically do with something like that is to start off with um, a much deeper level is really in terms of the strength of the person is to begin building. It's almost if you think about like the foundations of a house, you wouldn't start uh, fixing up and doing decorating in the top bedrooms if the foundations of the house are all broken and cracked and the house was all skewed. So one of the first things you need to do with addictions is to start working on the foundations and kind of straightening them all out and making them really strong so that later on in the treatment, when we want to start actually addressing the addiction, the person feels strong enough to begin to change their behaviour. What happens when I stop the hypnosis, though? How can I avoid relapse? Um, what we'd hope for is that as we go along, you're, the person who's, who's dealing with this, that, that, that their sense of themselves becomes, they become quite strong um, from the inside, from the kind of bottom up using the house metaphor. Uh, and as they do that, they'll begin to have new behaviours. They'll, be, they'll start thinking differently. They'll perhaps have different groups of friends 
uh, different support networks, um, and start making quite sub- substantial lifestyle changes. Um, typical thing, perhaps maybe with a cocaine addiction, somebody would typically use on a Friday night with friends. Well, they would avoid that situation for some time, and eventually, perhaps they wouldn't wouldn't socialise with that group of friends. So you begin it begins to get quite substantial lifestyle changes which actually takes the person into a new place where it's much more supportive. Thank you, Doug. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Thank you.